Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Uchida. And I'm Dagmar Bowman. Welcome to Yoga Masters Academy. Today we're going to be talking about why your own personal yoga practice is imperative. Imperative. You can't do without it because you burn out. So here's the thing. It's really hard as teachers to get your own practice in, to teach your classes, to take care of life, to be driving to and from the classes, to maybe have another job, maybe. to actually pay the bills, right? And to and to to sequence your classes, to actually class plan. I mean, there's a whole plus life if any of you have got kids or you've got everything else in life that has to get done. But here's why it's so important. If we don't practice, we're not practicing. And I know for me, if I don't get on my mat, I feel it within days. I feel a huge dip in my energy. I feel a dip in my joy of life, actually. Um, have you ever come to teach a class and you felt empty? You didn't really know what to say? or what it feels like to be in that pose? Well, it's because you probably haven't spent time on your practice feeling the pose. And as BKS Iyengar says, practice, 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 and all is coming. There's so much truth to that. Um, so if you feel any kind of imposter syndrome, like you're, I'm speaking for myself, on the mo in the moments when I feel like an imposter, it's because I have neglected my own personal practice. Yes, I, and I, for me, I've had to, um, so I've had babies, you know, and, and, and the practice has to adapt. Mm -hmm. So here, I was, I used to think that my practice needed to look like a very specific thing. It needed to be 60 minutes, it needed to be 90 minutes, it needed to be a hard class, it needed to be this, it needed to be that. And instead, what I realized is that with injuries, with getting pregnant, with changes in your body, that your practice can look like different things. When we pigeonhole ourselves into it must look like this, we end up closing ourselves off and we want a practice that's going to last our whole lives. Absolutely. So it has to be adaptable. And here's the thing. If you know how to adapt your own personal practice, you'll be a better teacher in helping other people adapt theirs. And it starts with just um, breaking open that framework of it has to look a certain way. Sometimes my practice is just 15 minutes on the mat, depending on what my body feels like and what my schedule is like. But I've spent those 15 minutes just to give myself that permission to be. And that's the difference to teaching, isn't it? How do you define the difference between teaching and having your own practice, Melissa? Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching, I'm being of service. When I'm teaching, my attention is actually outward. So I, um, I love in both of them, I get into the zone. So in both time stands still, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's like you're there and, and then the class is over and you're like, Oh, how that was fast. Um, but when I'm teaching, my focus is on my students and providing the safe space for my students. When I'm practicing, it's all inward. It's not even about the physical, but it starts physical and it's so we can move within. And I feel this level of bliss that is just, I, that you can't get any anywhere else. And if I were to teach a class while focused on myself, then I wouldn't be able to give to my students and you also it's almost like you're you, you get a little bit of each and you don't get the quality of having practiced or the quality of having taught a full practice because you're not fully present. Oh yeah, and if you're teaching, you're not practicing, right? I mean, if if your teaching becomes your own practice, mm -hmm. then you're not teaching. So because then you do not see what your class might need. You have to be able to look up and be there so you can teach to the needs in the classroom. Um, I find that that connectivity between my students and me seeing them and them feeling seen is what really makes the class different. That, that's when, when I light up inside of me and that's how I create connectivity to my students by seeing them. So it cannot be my practice. So I need to practice at home to fill my own cup because I can only give from a cup that's full. Otherwise, I end up in front of my classes 
you know, feeling envious for them being able to practice and me, I haven't, right? <laughs> oh, I have been there, right? When you get jealous of the students, like you get to practice and I haven't gotten to practice in days. It really is. Now here's a different time. It's a different time. And we teach a lot in gyms now mm -hmm. where it used to be in a yoga studio, the teacher didn't even set up a mat mm -hmm. or might set up a mat to demonstrate a couple of poses, but didn't stand on the mat and wasn't in the front of the room. Now with gyms, when you take a class at a gym, like a, let's say a body pump class or anything like that, a Zumba class, you're following the teacher. So the teacher is doing the thing and you're copying them. It, yoga, it's a different way of teaching. So with yoga, it's very, uh, you teach a group class, but you have to teach to specific people within the class. Can, let's talk about how confusing that could be for new teachers to go, well, wait a second, but I'm supposed to be on my mat and students are watching me. And so why can't I use that as my time and how much time should I spend on my mat mm -hmm. versus how much time to spend off of the mat watching or assisting? Actually, that's a really good point. Um, I just went to a, um, to a group meeting and I saw a new teacher who just finished in February and she took over a class that I just gave up on a Saturday morning. So she said to me, um, oh, it's really um, different to teach at a gym because everybody is at, at such a different level, but they don't want different levels, she said. They are all, always just doing what I'm doing. And I'm like, yeah, so why aren't you doing different levels? You, if you show different, if you talk about different levels, then show them different levels. Or is it because you do your own practice in front of them and you just do you? Yes, that's a big thing, you're right. So oftentimes as a, a, as a new teacher, you're still so much in your own practice that you're practicing the whole time in front of them. But then if that is you, start looking up, start stopping in, in the middle of a flow and look up and just see what you see and try to use your words to connect to your class, your eyesight to connect to the class. And then if you notice that they are not doing what you're saying, then you might go back and say, yeah, but you can also do it like this. So that it is a back and forth. It is like a conversation almost that you're having with what you see without them having to say something but it seems like um that's the tricky part where that distinguishes the teacher from the performer yes oh good point just yes this distinguishes the, the teacher from the performer i do think too when we're um i used to tell new teachers we want our students not to be watching us because if they're watching us, then they're still outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. And the practice of yoga is really about bringing our awareness inward. So if we're, we, we do that, of course, by where, where's the weight in our feet? Where's the weight in our hands? What are we doing with our physical bodies? Where's the focal point? So we cue all these things, but if my student is watching me, they're not in the zone. They're not in their own practice. It's only when they're able to even tune me out. And I'll tell students, even when you get to the point where you don't hear my voice, that's a really great thing. I want you to get so deep into your practice that you don't even hear me, that any that someone could run through the rooms yelling fire and you wouldn't even notice it. That's how that's really being in the zone. And when we get to intermediate and advanced levels, students get into that practice. So it's sort of hard if you're if we set up a mat and we're on our mats the whole time, it tells the student, watch me. Mm -hmm. So how do we create that to where we it's accessible for beginners to be able to watch you, but we're not stealing their attention and stealing their practice time by saying, look at me. Yeah. And how can we create wording around the sensations in the body if we have to be in that place to feel it ourselves if not by having a home practice so we already know what it feels like in our bodies and we can speak to that without them having to see us and without us having to be in the pose to be able to describe it 
Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Another great thing about the home practice too, another essential about our home practice is it allows us our time to quiet our minds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yoga is a moving meditation. Um, I do have a meditation practice that's separate from my yoga practice, but it is a moving meditation. And if I were to not do one or the other, I know that I would at least get that quiet time through meditation. If we're talking and we're giving and we're which we are when we're teaching we're giving that's not our time and we really need it it's essential to refill our own tanks to avoid burnout mm -hmm. to avoid um jealousy to avoid um over giving and not receiving we have to give that to ourselves you know i've made this mistake lately about um, self-appreciation and i've been really working on appreciating myself and not expecting other people to appreciate me. Um, it's challenging. It's Hashtag Mother's Day. <laughs> Hashtag Mother's Day. <laughs> I was like, hit it. No, it's, you know, it's how do we do that? That we have to actually say, you know what? I'm worth it. I'm worth this time. I'm worth the time on my mat. I schedule the time. Oh, and that's the other thing. I have to put it in my appointment book mm. as an appointment with myself. Oh, I have to do it first thing in the morning. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. There's too many other things during the day that that tag on me. And then if I'm teaching early in the morning and I don't get up earlier um, to take off, take care of myself first, then I have to make time in the afternoon. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Yes. And that's not so good. But um, here's another thing about the importance of um, putting yourself first. It's called self care is not selfish. Know that if you spend that time for yourself, you'll be showing up in much better ways, not only as a teacher, but also as you're juggling all the other um, responsibilities that you might have in your life. So make yourself a priority, not from a narcissistic or selfish standpoint, but really from that place of if I give myself first, if I feed myself first, I'll have enough that's poor, that it will pour out of me in all my other relationships and make yoga so much part of your life that it becomes you. Just like you're brushing your teeth, yeah. like you said earlier, it's for your mental health and we need it's a mental health awareness need it and um yeah when we take care of ourselves when we give ourselves what we need we fill up our tank so to speak um then we can actually support other people around us if if our tanks are empty we can't do that we just can't do you don't have it to give i know for me i get depleted and i, I i've got nothing and when I've got nothing, no one benefits. My students don't benefit. My kids don't benefit. I don't benefit. My friends, no one, no one benefits. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to take care of ourselves. You are worth it. We are worth it. And if you have any questions of our ideas of how to squeeze it in, please let us know. We have uh, contact uh, information down below. Yeah. Um, so reach out to us if this resonated with you. Let us know if you have additional questions. Let us know and please roll out your mat, maybe right next to your bed. So when you step on it, you will get stuck on it. It's called sticky mat for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs> Bye.